Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me. Welcome to everybody, especially to our distinguished guests. I would like to start from going to a very general question to, to probably more concrete things. And my general question concerns uh, global social movements. Now, some skeptics argue that no matter how powerful or, or how forceful these demonstrations and various actions are, there's not really a coherent central ideology behind these movements. Others say that that's in fact a good thing, that diversity is basically the major force that is making these things work, and that's the advantage behind uh, these movements. Um, my question concerns this, that being faced with extremely centralized, very, very well organized organizations as such, is there a need for some sort of centralization within the movements themselves, or would that really lead to the movement falling apart as such? Well, the movements uh, that exist are a reflection of social reality. I mean, you can't uh, make a decision to uh, impose a central authority on uh, wi widely decentralized uh, movements all over the world, which uh, have their own interests and concerns and share uh, some general framework, but uh, are working on particular problems. So, landless workers in Brazil and uh, uh, peasants in India and uh, steel workers in the United States and so on have some over, overall general concerns, like, uh, say, protecting an environment in which uh, uh, their grandchildren can survive or uh, uh, preventing nuclear war and so on. Those are general concerns, but they're uh, very specific ones. Uh, is that, uh, and it, it just would make no sense for someone to come along and say, okay, let's have a, a fixed central ideology that we all adhere to. Those, to the extent that such centralized ideological, general ideological positions develop, it's a, a reflection of the level of consciousness and commitment and engagement of the people. Is it a strength or a weakness? I, my own feeling is it's a strength. Uh, the centralized, I mean, this is, uh, ever since the, if you look at the history, uh, ever since the origins of the, <coughs> the modern left and the labor movement of the 19th century, basically, uh, there have, a long-term goal has always been to develop uh, some kind of an international. So every labor union is called an international, even if they don't go beyond their own city. Uh, and uh, there were you know, the first, second, third, and fourth internationals, uh, they were all highly centralized and uh, uh, under uh, pretty narrow elite control. Uh, the first international was actually destroyed by Marx personally when he couldn't control it any longer. The second one collapsed at the time of the Second World War. The third was just an instrument of Russian state policy, and the fourth is uh, Trotskyist sectarian. Uh, uh, this, what's happening now for the first time ever is the rise of a genuine international. Uh, if you look at the, the groups that come together, say, in the World Social Forum, uh, they represent a, a variety of uh, people of a kind <coughs> just unimagined by the first four internationals. Uh, in fact, uh, the reason they meet in the South, um, first Brazil and then India, is because that's where they arose. Uh, they arose in uh, southern, what's called the South, the third world. And the North, the rich countries, became involved later on. Uh, the, uh, and, and there's a tremendous diversity of, uh, of people, uh, walks of life, uh, men and women, uh, uh, you know, every, anything you can imagine is involved there, and they share plenty of concerns and they work on very specific issues and it's developing into a, what could be the seeds of the first genuine international but it, then it is you know, where such social movements will go of course you can't predict uh, one of the best things about the World Social Forum more than its annual meetings is that it has uh, spawned lots of regional social forums uh, regional, local and some of them 
small towns have their own social forums and they you know, adapt the general concerns to what their own particular live interests are. It can be rather local. And then it sort of feeds back into the general uh, system. In fact, the World Social Forum itself uh, uh, meets alongside of other international meetings. So the last one I went to happened to be in Puerto Alegre last year. But uh, when I got off the airplane, I didn't go to the World Social Forum. I went to the uh, Via Campesina uh, International Meeting. That's the International Peasant Association, which was meeting in parallel with the World Social Forum, but uh, not really part of it. Um, the International Peasant Organization, which uh, peasants are, after all, a large majority of the world's population, uh, they have uh, their own problem, and they were working on them. You know, there was some interaction with the World Social Forum, it's friendly and so on, but separate. And I, that's a healthy sign. I mean, it's a sign that uh, you know, people are dedicated to working on the real problems for them, not uh, mouthing some ideology they learned somewhere. Uh, but also uh, interacting with one another at uh, whatever level is productive. Uh, but, so, so I personally, I think it's, probably, it's a healthy sign. But uh, whether you think it's healthy or unhealthy, you can't decide to change it from outside. I mean, it does reflect uh, the social reality of uh, popular activism and protest, uh, which is very, uh, very widespread, probably more than ever in history but extremely uh, disorganized. Uh, well, just, I mean, take, say, the United States. Uh, the level of activism in the United States is beyond anything in my lifetime, at least. Uh, on the other hand, if you take city, the city where I live, Boston, uh, people in one part of the town don't know that somebody in the other part of the town is working on the same issues. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons for... Uh, and I spent a lot of my time just going around giving talks. And one of the main reasons for the talks is just to bring people together who wouldn't know each other otherwise, even if they're nearby and have similar interests and so on. You know, it's a very atomized uh, society. Much of the world is like that. Uh, that's, in fact, <coughs> part of the kind of class war that's going on to keep people separated from one another, but it's real. And it has its strengths and its weaknesses, but uh, you can't wish it out of existence. 